Hello, everyone, and welcome to Write Virtual Visits. I'm Heidi Ruley, Executive Director of the Unity Temple Restoration Foundation and part of the leadership group for this program. We are so excited to go live today to Cedar Rock, the Lowell and Agnes Walter Estate in Independence, Iowa, and the Laurent House in Rockford, Illinois. From the architecture of the homes to the details of the furnishings, both the Laurent and Walter properties expertly capture the philosophy of Wright's Usonian style. But before we begin, I would like to extend a big thank you to Allison Wong and Forever Ready Productions for managing the logistics and producing our live stream today and throughout the series. During the event, if you have questions, please type them in the comments anytime, and we'll ask as many as possible during the event. Now I'm going to turn it over to Larry from the Laurent House and Nathan from Cedar Rock to introduce themselves and get us started. Well, hello, Heidi. Thank you for introducing us. My name is Nathan. I've been an interpretive guide here at Cedar Rock for about six years now. And um, I'd like to start off our uh, virtual visit today here by introducing you to the owners of our house, Lowell and Agnes Walter. Uh, Lowell and Agnes were both uh, local Iowans, uh, born here in Iowa and raised. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. were born in 1895 and 1897, respectively. And uh, the Walters had two businesses that they operated during their lifetime. One was a road building company and the other was a farmland management operation. During their lifetime, they never had any children. And how they got into contact with Frank Lidrate was actually through a magazine article that was published in uh, June of 1945 called the Ladies Home Journal. In there, they saw that page labeled Opus 497, a crystal home for town or country living. And as I understand, the Laurent House has a, a similar story to us. Um, so I'll go ahead and pass the mic over to Larry. Larry, you might be on mute there. So can you um, unmute yourself or maybe check your microphone? Okay, looks like we're having a little technical difficulty. So um, Nathan, why don't you continue on and we'll jump in when, when Larry, um, when we can hear them. Sure. So uh, one, one thing about these Usonian homes is that Frank Goodery always had a, a method to plan out these houses. With our house here, you may be able to see the floor right behind me. It's made up of rectangles. Uh, these rectangles are about five foot, three inches long and about half that measurement wide. Uh, they're rotated about every 90 degrees and they create this lovely, uh, almost woven like pattern. Uh, the whole house here is designed on this five foot three grid system. So where the walls are placed, where the furniture is placed, even the elevations from the floor to the, to the ceiling are based on that five foot three scale. Um, one thing I should also mention about our house too is the materials that it's made out of. Our house, as you can see behind me here, is made with plenty of brick, concrete, glass, and walnut. The walnut you may not be able to see uh, too well right now, uh, but that's because this is the public facing side of the house. The public side of the house is uh, meant to be a, a little more private. And along the, the walkway here, I have some recessed lights that are either uh, recessed into the concrete roof or inside the house that shine through these windows. Uh, I have a photo here that I can share with you of what that looks like uh, in the evening. So there you can see the, the light going through uh, the clerestory windows, the light coming out of one of the brick partition walls. And it was kind of a, a rainy day too when we took that photo. <laughs> so now we're uh, approaching the front door of the house. And as soon as we enter here, we are greeted by one of Frank Lloyd Wright's uh, art glass displays. So you can see that there right next to me. Oops, I'll try not to be in the way. It's even reflected in the mirrors on the walls, but um, this uh, glass display uh, was uh, quite a special feature to uh, Usonian houses. 
as uh, it was like a, a modern way of doing like a stained glass window. And with these uh, pieces that you can move around uh, for the occasion, so you can emphasize maybe reds and greens for Christmas, reds and oranges for fall, and so on and so forth. I also understand that the Laurent House has uh, some other special lighting too. So uh, Nathan, while we are waiting for um, Larry to rejoin us, I have a quick question for you. Mm -hmm. um, there uh, was that was a Taliesin apprentice assigned to the construction of the home. That's correct. Uh, John DeCoben Hill uh, was an apprentice of Frank Legree, and uh, he had worked on the construction, overseeing the construction here in Cedar Rock. Um, as I understand, this is one of the first homes that Frank Lederate had assigned to one of his students and John Hill. Uh, there's a story that goes around uh, that uh, goes, uh, John was uh, so nervous that, you know, he had so much to live up to and so much to look over here with all the details of the lights, the furniture, uh, making sure that everything was just the right way. He went into town and he bought himself a wide brim hat, just like Frank Legrate's, uh, to make himself look like the architect himself and feel a little more confident. That is a fantastic story. All right, we're still holding a little bit on um, Larry at the Laurent House. Would you like to continue on or should would you like to take another question? Um, I'll go ahead and take another question here. Great, um, so let's see. Can you explain um, the, the um, the location of Cedar Rock and you know what is surrounding it in general? Mm -hmm. So Cedar Rock is located in rural Iowa, just outside of Quasquitan. Um, the first year I worked here, I had a little trouble saying the town's name. So most people call it Kwaski. Um, it's about a, a town of 500 people. Well, looks like we uh, looks like Nathan got frozen a little bit there, but I do believe we have Larry back. So can we go ahead um, over to Laurent House and Larry, if you can start the tour, um, and we'll we'll let you know when it's time to turn it back over. Um, welcome to Laurent House. My name is Larry Nelson. I'll be your docent for this virtual visit today. Now, the Laurents, Kenneth was born in 1919. His wife Phyllis was born in 1918. Uh, at the age of 27, uh, Kenneth had a tumor on his spinal cord. And once they operated, he became paraplegic and remained so until he passed away just a couple weeks shy of 93. All right. He was rehabbing at the Vaughn Rehab Center, which is part of the Heinz Veterans Complex in Maywood, Illinois. Uh, his wife moved in with her parents. Uh, the wife, Phyllis, received a complimentary subscription to House Beautiful magazine, the August 1948 edition. In there, they featured an article by uh, Lauren Pope. It was a man's love affair with his house. Uh, she shared the article with Kenneth, and he uh, piqued his interest, so he went to the library, and they actually had Frank Lloyd Wright's autobiography. After he read a little of that, he wrote to Wright and asked him if he could build him a house. And uh, Wright uh, responded within a couple weeks, yes, he was interested. Can't guarantee the price, who knows what costs are today. And this started the relationship. Uh, uh, basically, the construction for at least this Usonian home, they involved a slab, and uh, basically ours was a one pour process, three and a half inches, and three foot squares. As you can see, if you look down on the, uh, the outside pavement. Uh, the right actually specified limestone for this house. The rents couldn't afford it, so they went with Chicago common brick, as you can see here. And then it's a completely, or was a completely flat roof, and there's certainly all kinds of problems with that, but at any rate, flat roof. And then the uh, inside of the house, uh, the non-load bearing walls were what we call sandwich walls. Ours were board and bat and tongue and groove sandwich walls. Okay. And uh, they were, Wright gave them three choices. Uh, the first choice was Tidewater Red Cypress, and that's what they went with. That was actually war surplus at that time. And uh, you should have a, uh, so I guess let's go in the house. Okay. 
Okay, here's your Borden Bat and Tongue and Groove sandwich walls. Okay. And then the ceilings are plaster. Uh, the recessed lighting, uh, these light boxes, there's four pieces of red Tidewater Cypress. Uh, the outside are topped with screens, the inside with galvanized sheet metal. There's a total of 20 on the outside, 40 on the inside. As you can see, as you look down the hall, you get a nice warm glow from the light reflecting off that Tidewater Red Cypress. Okay, are they ready for him? Pardon? Yep. Oh. So, um, much like your house, our, our house uh, has a brick that came from Illinois, too. Um, and so, in the room that I am in right now, it's not very um, uh, open or large. It's a very compressed room. But the next room in our virtual visit today that I'd like to bring you to is the garden room. So, as I swivel around here, no notice how bright and expansive the room is becoming. So this is the main living space of the house. It makes up half the total square footage of the house, 900 square feet. In here, we have enough seating for about 48 people. And it was a great space to entertain uh, with a, uh, a piano for concerts, plenty of seating for relaxing during the day, um, and even a dining space right behind me. Now, one of the Walter's favorite activities uh, while living here was really enjoying the garden room, enjoying the indoor outdoor relationship here. And right behind me, it's a little sunny today, but we have a fountain on our lawn. Uh, there's a fun little story that goes along with our fountain that Mr. Walter used to keep his live fishing bait in there. That way he could start fishing down at the Frank Lederate Design Boathouse. So I think I'd like to pass the, the mic off to Larry as I think his house also has a water feature. Yes, okay. As you come in on the foyer, this is the original guest closet. Those doors used to be up there before they added the addition. Now you're coming into the cove as well as the garden room, approximately 60 feet from the wall behind uh, the camera person down to that wall. And here is the garden room. It consists of a 55 foot hemicycle window wall alternated between operating and stationary. All the operated ones have screens. We've taken them down to improve the view. There's also an elliptical koi pond. All right. And then there's the plantings. And down at this end, they actually have a banquette uh, installed. So you could sit on the uh, banquette and look out into the garden. And uh, I guess I'll pass it back to Nathan for what he's going to do next. All right. So uh, another area that I had briefly touched on here in the garden room was the dining space. And I'd like to point out about the dining space are these special octagonal tables that you see. If you look at the corners of these, um, you'll notice they have a same uh, uh, curved form to them as the roof of our house. Uh, but with the tables, there's one that has uh, convex and the other, uh, which you see uh, just right over here near my neck, uh, that one has a convex corner. And the reason why our tables are done that way is so that they're able to fit together to expand the dining space. So the way it is right now, it's enough for about three people, but you can expand it for six people. So there we have a photo of it set up for a lovely uh, uh, evening with a, a fondue uh, pot there. <laughs> uh, and as I understand, uh, with with uh, these Frank Luderate homes, uh, the furniture is always designed for that specific house. Uh, but the Laurent house, I think they have a similar piece to us. So I'll hand the, the microphone back to Larry. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Nathan. Yes, our furniture was all designed by Taliesin, as Nathan mentioned. And, but it's all stuff that was designed for other houses. None of it was specifically designed for our house as far as the furniture goes. The house itself was because this is the only house he ever designed for a paraplegic. We also have uh, the hexagonal table. 
And this would have been the table they ate at uh, across from the fireplace before they added the addition, which included the bumpy, uh, dining room bump out you see there. Now, in addition to the hexagonal table, we also have eight of these origami tables. They're quite versatile. One side's longer, would fit over the banquette cushion. You could have a person on either side. You could bring up a couple of the hassocks. You could have four people. If you really felt sociable, you could put all eight of them together and put all 12 hassocks around it and have a real gad fest. Okay, I guess uh, the other table we have is the one that John Howe designed for the addition. And that actually is meant to go under those lights there. Uh, but this worked out better for the Lorenz. Okay, I'll pass it back to Nathan. So the next area uh, on the, the right virtual visit tour, uh, we'll go ahead and see the workspace of the house. So we're going to be going back into a very compressed space again. And uh, the theme with this house, natural beauty and efficiency. So this room is all about efficiency. And most of it hasn't changed from its original 1950s condition. Um, we actually have a, a black and white photo that Mrs. Walter took, of, or I'm sorry, uh, Ezra Stoller, uh, Franklin Rates' uh, personal photographer, uh, she took of the room. Uh, so uh, it, it looks like a very modern kitchen to us today. It's got open shelves, uh, recessed lights underneath all the cabinets here for every workspace. But the one minor thing that did change about the kitchen was the big brown refrigerator and dishwasher behind me. Um, those were replacements in 1969. Um, and this is technically the only change that the Walters had made to their Cedar Rock home. So I'll go ahead and, oh wait, um, I think there's one more thing I want to mention uh, while we're in this room too. Um, uh, is the, the bathroom for this house. Now, I won't be able to walk there with you because uh, I'll drop the Wi-Fi signal, but you can see a picture on the screen there. Uh, that's a diagram for our bathroom. It was pre-manufactured in a factory uh, in Chicago, Illinois, and it took only 15 minutes to install here. That is something that you would have seen on a Pullman train car. It was a very, very small and efficient bathroom. The sink assembly that you see in that diagram swivels over the toilet or over the bathtub. And that was one of the biggest safe, safe, uh, space saving features of that bathroom unit. So I'll go ahead and pass the mic back over to Larry uh, as uh, his kitchen uh, bathroom are a little different than ours. Okay. If you could pull up the uh, old black and white photo of our kitchen, the original kitchen, it's there? Mm -hmm. Okay, Th that was the way it looked when they, uh, the house was built. Like I say, in 1960, they added an addition, and so it expanded things. But that's, that's the original, okay? And now, uh, after a while, they remodeled the kitchen, and this is what you see now. This is after the addition. And the electric sink you see in the old photograph, and they replaced it with a newer dishwasher. Uh, also, the range is here, and then there's a pass-through. Uh, Nathan indicated they could accommodate 48 people. Uh, we, once the addition was done, they could accommodate 32 people here without adding any tables or chairs. But because he was handicapped, a lot of the family get-togethers were here. And according to the daughter, there were up to 70 people would be in this house. Okay. And so... Uh, now, as far as the bathroom, if you could pull up the uh, image of the old bathroom, the black and white. Is it there? Sorry, Larry, I don't think I have that photo. Oh, okay. All right, well, here, let's go into the, the current bathroom then. All right. Now, this uh, master bathroom is a Jack and Jill arrangement. You can only get to it from either Kenneth's, or excuse me, Mark's bedroom or the master bedroom. And this is typical of both the, of the non-master bedrooms. Bypass door closet, single bed, built-in desk, and the cantilevered uh, floating hemicycle cabinets. 
The reason for the cantilever is it allows clearance for Kenneth's footrest on his wheelchair. Now here is their master bathroom. I can't emphasize how large this is by Usonian home standards. Kenneth would come in from the master bedroom in his wheelchair. He could reach all the linen shelves from his wheelchair. He could use the mirror in the medicine cabinet. Plus he could reach all of the shelves in the medicine cabinet. This was where he would use the sink. Here he would bring his wheelchair, rotate around, transfer slide board onto the toilet, transfer slide board into the, onto the shelf. Kenneth was in this house uh, over 59 years. As far as Kenneth was concerned, it was 100% Kenneth compatible. In fact, he often quipped that he was blessed by this house because it allowed him to focus on his capabilities rather than his disabilities. And he considered that was the gift that Wright gave him when he designed this house. Okay, back to Nathan. Oh, wait a minute. Here, here's what the original bathroom looked like. Okay. All right. Great. Well, um, thank you both for the thorough tour. And uh, we have a couple of questions here, unless you had anything else you want to tell us about the space you're in right now. Well, I just wanted to finish up on one more note here at Cedar Rock. Uh, like the Laurent House, the Walters absolutely loved their home. Uh, they thought of their house as their, their patronage, uh, patronage to the arts. And they loved to share it with as many people as they could. And so uh, these homes are really spectacular to see in person. Um, as, as you can kind of see on camera here, the, the sun is just too bright to see the outside coming inside through the windows here. Well, I have to say, I've been fortunate enough to be able to visit both homes, and there are so many plants there uh, right behind you, uh, Nathan. Um, the question I want to ask you is um, about not exactly how many, but do they cover any other areas in the house, and are they all real? Yes. So all the plants here are 100% real. They're the great-great-grandchildren of all the original plants brought in here in 1950, imported all the way from Brazil. My apologies, I just kind of... Uh, backed into a table here, but you can see right next to me here, uh, these huge monstera leaves, uh, we polish every one of them. Um, there's uh, a plant that grows in the, let's turn it around here, um, in the garden down behind me, and it grows up around the clear stories of this room uh, for a grand total of 60 feet worth of vine above our heads here. Great. And I have a question actually for both of you. And Larry, if you want to answer first, um, who is the current owner of the Laurent House? The Laurent House Foundation. Uh, Jerry Heinzroth is the moving force behind this. He actually befriended the Laurents the last 10 years they lived here. He's the one that organized the foundation. He's the one that raised the money to buy the house. So I tell all my guests that without Jerry Heinzroth, this would not be a museum. And I just want to jump in. Um, the Laurent House Foundation is also um, a recipient of the Franklin Wright Building Conservancy's Wright Spear Award this year. So that's uh, obviously all, all of you are working so hard to, um, together to keep this building in good shape. And of course, um, the original uh, person who purchased it. And um, same, same question to you, Nathan, who owns the home? So the Walter Charitable Trust uh, is uh, the entity that owns our house. It's the same trust that was set up by the Walters themselves. Uh, very early on, uh, starting in 1959, the Walters started planning uh, to donate their house to the people of Iowa. So they had set up that trust. Uh, today, uh, we're a part of the, the Iowa State Park system. Uh, they're, they're the ones that uh, hire people like me uh, to offer interpretive services and tours of the house. And then uh, we also have a nonprofit organization uh, here called the Friends of Cedar Rock, and they're responsible uh, for the uh, preservation and restoration and education efforts here at Cedar Rock. Great. Um, I have a question um, from, oh, um, Yvonne from Brazil um, wants to know, in the Laurent bathroom picture, the historic photo, was there equipment such as a laundry machine or something similar in there? Yes. The, the, that is not uh, in the photo. That's actually their washer and dryer. 
The two that are currently there were donated by a local appliance dealer. They relate back to the early 50s, but they were never owned by Lorenz. So the washer and dryer, remember, there is no basement, there is no attic, there is no garage, there is no freestanding storage. So everything has to be accounted for on this level, with the exception of the mechanical room, which houses our boiler for the radiant heat and our uh, hot water for the plumbing. Great. Thank you. Um, I've got one or two more here, and then we're going to wrap up. Um, Elissa wants to know if uh, both the homes are open to the public for visiting. Nathan, you want to go ahead? Sure. So Cedar Rock is open to the public typically from May to October. This year will be open until October 16th. Uh, tours typically run Wednesday through Sunday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the hour every hour. Okay, the Laurent House, we have public tours on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, starting usually in March, right? April. What? April. April, and going through October. Uh, and De then December. also there's private tours. All the time. Through December, Larry. Through December. I'm sorry, through December. Yeah, Mary Beth, because I only live five minutes from this house, I, I get called in at the last minute to do uh, the tours. Actually, it's been a fascinating time. Uh, one time she called me up, Peter Maunu, who's a jazz musician, was a jazz musician with the Artemio Hall show. He was in town to do a, a concert, and he owns the Jack Lambertson house in Oskaloosa, Iowa. And he basically wanted to see the house. And I found him to be very informative. I did not know the lineage on our lamps until after Peter informed me. Uh, we have a couple of Kurt Versons. We have several Walter Van Nessens. Great. Well, I think we're about out of time. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us today, Larry and Nathan. And I know we had a couple of technical difficulties, but I think of the most part, we were able to show everybody the wonderful features of both your homes. So thank you for your time. And I just wanted to let everyone know that we will not have a Wright virtual visits next month because many of us will be busy attending the Frankwood Wright Building Conservancy Annual Conference, which is coming up in Chicago and online uh, mid-October. A few slots remain uh, to, to attend in person, but registration to attend online has just opened up. The online experience includes live streaming and recorded access to the full program of talks on Saturday the 22nd, the presentation of the Right Spirit Awards that evening, and two exclusive online sessions on Sunday, October 23rd. Plus, you will have access to stream the documentary about the restoration of Unity Temple. There are special rates available for students and Right Public Site staff and volunteers, and you can learn more at saveright.org backslash conference. So once again, thank you all uh, for being part of our show this uh, today, and we look forward to seeing you back again in November. So have a great day. Thank you. Thank you for having me.